tools. I'm just going to show you how to make a, a nice easy heart bar shoe, uh, how to measure for a foot and how you can make them and fit them quickly, easily and accurately. So I'm going to show you how to make a, a three quarter fullered heart bar shoe. I'm just going to show you how I work the measurements out. Just draw some rough chalk lines on there. Obviously this is a shoe and that's where your foot would fit to on this shoe. So if this was a foot and these chalk lines show where the foot would be, I'd measure my foot up. The foot measures six inches wide, which is 152 millimetres, by from the point of the heel to the toe, five and three quarters along, which is 145 millimetres. And then I'll measure my frog plate, which is three inches, and that is 76 millimetres. So if I'd measure my foot, my foot was six inches by five and three quarters. So add those together, we come up to 11 and three quarter inches, which is 145 mil. So to make that shoe, on a normal three quarter full of shoe, you'd have a heat in the toe and you jump the toe, you'd normally jump half an inch into the toe. But on a bar shoe, you generally don't need to do it because generally with bar shoes, you'll either side clip it or quarter clip it and you'll uh, break, break the toe over there. So that made the section a little bit wider, so you don't need to jump the toe. So if I was making a normal three quarter full of shoe for this foot, five and three quarters by six is 11 and three quarter inches, that's 145 mil. Then I'd add on um, one and a quarter inches for the steel that you lose, because every time you bend your toe, the steel gathers up on the inside, on the inside of the bend, and you lose a little bit of steel there. So you've got to add on to work out uh, what, to compensate the steel that you're losing when you bend it. So because I'm not jumping the toe, I've only added on one and a quarter inches, so that's 31 mil, and that comes to 13 inches. So if I was making an open heel, three quarter full of shoe for this foot without jumping the toe, I'd need 13 inches, which is 330 mil. And that fit quite nicely, that means my shoe would come up to the point of the heel and fit quite nicely on this particular foot. Because uh, I'm making a heart bar shoe, I've already measured the frog, which is 3 inches, uh, 76 mil. So I've got to add that onto my 13 inches that I've already worked out, I've already calculated to make the open heel shoe. So that comes to 16 inches, which is 407 mil. Then to work out how much steel you're going to use in the frog plate there, you need to start with inch wide section, so which is about 25 millimetres. So I'm going to need to add on another inch to my formula, which means I have 17 inches of inch wide steel. I then need to add on, sorry, half an inch for each bend there. You know, you add on one and a quarter for the toe bend, you need to compensate for each bend that you do around there when you bring the, the steel around to form a frog plate. So half an inch, half an inch, I have to add on to my total so far, which brings it to, to 18 inches, it's 460 millimetres in total. So to make a bar shoe for this foot, I have to cut 18 inches. So just a quick breakdown. Width plus length, plus the length of the frog plate, plus half an inch for that corner, plus half an inch for that corner, plus one and a quarter for the toe bend, uh, plus the width of the section. All, add, all, add all that up, that comes to 18 inches. If I was using a thinner section, like uh, 20 mil or three quarter, instead of adding an inch on, I'd add on 20 mil or three quarters. But you add on, have to add on at some point the width of the section that you're going to use because you lose it by, with all the bends that you put in there. But it sounds a bit tricky but as we're sort of forging the shoe I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to bend the toe on the bar shoe, 18 inches I've got there. Well, the most common thing people do when they're making a big bar shoe like this is hold it right at the end there and put the other end on the anvil and start banging away roughly in the middle and they end up with a massive big toe bend. But it's not really a massive shoe effectively. So hold your tongs a little bit further down the steel and instead of having the end of the steel on the bit there, just push it down a little bit. It just means you'll end up with a, a shorter, more compact toe bend really. And as you level it on the anvil, just glance over and check the shape of it. Uh, it's not a bad little shape so far. Balance it up on the anvil, use the anvil, these straight edges. So if I was splitting it down the centre there, you can see it's, well, it's not far off. But that distance from there to there is slightly smaller than that distance there to there, which means this branch needs to come down a little bit. If you just break it down a little bit like that, you can see it's quite straight up there, whereas that shoe's bent, that branch bend in there. So it's not a symmetrical toe bend at the moment. So I just know all I've got to do is bend a touch more there. There you go. Fairly symmetrical toe bend. So I'll make this off the hammer. Won't bother rasping it up. So we're going to run round the bick. Quite a big toe bend, so run round the wide part of the bick up there. Just very lightly tapping it. You don't have your steel on the anvil at 90 degrees, you have it lent over fractionally. So the anvil works that edge off and your hammer works that edge off. And then you swap it over and do it the other side. 
practice. Light taps, overlapping blows. And it's not really what your hammer's doing on this surface, it's what the anvil's doing on that surface. It's working all those little bumps out that are forged in with the round face of the hammer. That's it, nice little toe bend and then it's going back in the fire. It's a three inch frog plate on this, uh, this heart bar shoe. I haven't measured it, I just sort of generally do it by eye. But I'm just going to taper that down, that's going to form the half of my frog plate. Um, it's around about one and a half inches long. If I was put a centre dot in, I would have put a cent measured from the end there to one and a half inches, half of the frog plate length, and just taper it down. But I make like quite a lot of heart bar, so I don't have to generally, uh, don't have to generally bother with centre dots anymore these days. What I've done, it's uh, 5 sixteenths, which I think is 8 millimetres section. I've uh, tapered it down into a point there, but I've left it fatter there, so it's actually uh, about 11, 12 mil thick there. A lot of guys, when they're making these, they'll forge it down to a point like that, and then they'll flatten it back to original thickness there, back to that 8 mil thickness. If you leave it a little bit fatter, it means when you've got both your frog plates overlapped like that, it gives you more tolerance. You can forge your scarves back in nicely, and hopefully you can't see where it's welded. Um, in a competition, when I'm making these at home, I'd do, I'd have a three quarter heat, so I'd heat the shoe from there all the way around, I'd bend my toe, I'd put that point on, then I'd go on the bick and I'd wrap that round, and then I'd bend the branch in one heat. But breaking it down, obviously you can't do it in one heat. So my next heat, I'll forge that round the bick, uh, and I'll just make that into, uh, I call it like a swan's head, but I'll show you what I mean when we get around to it. Right, so this is still fatter there. I'm just going to bend it around a bit. Working right at the far end of the bit there. You can't work any further up there. You've got to work right at the narrow part of your bit. So I'm forging that down now, trying to get quite an acute angle in there. If I hit the, the top of the uh, my frog plate there, all that will happen is it'll bend that. So I'm hitting roughly there and forging it back into itself just to create quite an acute angle in there. Ooh, just hit the GoPro again. So I'll put that on top of my shoe that I'm copying there. So this branch here corresponds nicely to that branch there and that angle in there, that angle there is about the same as that angle there. Um, generally I do that in one heat and then I go on the bick and I forge that round but if you, when you're learning to make heart bars, it's easier to make that side there and then turn it around and make the other side. Round. Keep your seal nice and clean, especially when you're welding. You don't want all this scale. And this is out of the gas, so it obviously gets scaled up quite a lot. So forge down to a point, one and a half inches, which is obviously half of your, your frog plate. Your frog plate's um, three inches. So each branch, each uh, point that you forge down needs to be half of your thickness of your frog plate. Leaving it slightly fatter again so you've got more tolerance to forge out any uh, scarves you might have once you've welded it. Onto the thin end of the bit. You see how it's twisted, it's quite a thin section this, it's twisting quite a lot. Don't let it twist too much, you twist it a little bit and then pull it back onto the anvil and level it up. So you can see again, that angle there is not quite right at the moment. See the, that uh, frog plate there just needs narrowing up a little bit, just forging in a tiny little bit more, just so it corresponds to the shoe or the foot. That looks about right to me. And that's what I meant about the, uh, the swans looking at each other. It looks like a, a pair of swans looking at each other. And that's the easiest way to learn to make heart bars. Uh, it's easy just to bang them around and knock them out rough and ready. But if you make them like this, you can put it on the anvil and balance it, and you can see everything's, sim everything's uh, symmetrical. You draw a line down the middle there, and that's exactly the same as that. So it's an easier way to do it. It does take fractionally more time, 
but it's definitely a, a more accurate, more calculated way of doing it. So like I said, firewheel, keep it as clean as you can. Not as easy as it sounds when you're working out the gas forge. So you're just going to bring this branch round. When you get forging further up towards the, uh, the frog plate there, you can't forge down this wide part of the bick. You've got to work it further up. But don't work it at 90 degrees for the bick. Work it at an angle like that so you've still got quite a large area of the bick on the inside surface of your shoe and then you don't end up with dents all in it. So if we're making it for a foot, you can measure it now and check it for size. If we're making it to copy this shoe here, lay it on top and say, yeah, it's about right. Maybe that frog plate just needs to come in a tiny little bit. It's easy enough to do. Just upset the shoe a little bit. Tap it in. And see, I've just hit the end of it. And it's just made that frog plate curl a little bit. So I'll straighten it out. That's about it. We're about right there so far. And same on the other branch. Um, I'll bring it round. I'll get this branch hot here. I'll bring it round and as this branch gets close to that, I'll just tap it down a little bit so that'll go underneath of this side of the frog plate. And that's how I weld. I haven't got it too hot because it's only bending the branch around a bit. It doesn't need to be really hot for that. So hold it in the toe, work it round the bit and as you get towards the frog plate, just move your shoe towards the point of the bit there. And as it gets closer to that other branch, see how it's quite, pretty close now. I'll just tap it down and then when I bring that branch around it'll just be underneath of that one. So I'll put it on the anvil, balance it up. Looking at it now, it's, it's uh, that branch there needs to come in from the toe there. Working out the gas, that's one of the perks of working out the gas. The whole shoe's always hot. So at this point here, I'm going to copy this shoe. But if I want, if I had, uh, if I was making this shoe for a horse with uh, quite a big gap between the heels, quite a wide-footed horse, you'd have to get a longer piece of chalk. You'd have less of an acute angle in there. So this frog, this frog plate here, come off at more of that angle there, and the same on that one there, and that would make your shoe so you could have a wider gap between the heels. If you've got a contracted foot and you want uh, a small gap between the heels, you'd uh, forge these in a little bit, hit it there and make it into even more of an acute angle. So that frog plate comes up at this angle here and that one at the same angle there. And that makes the gap between the heels either wider or narrow, however you want them. So I'll get a nice heat on this now. This will be my scarfing up heat. Make sure it's level. What I'm gonna do is forge this surface here onto that surface there. Nice little angle like that, 45 degrees. Flip it over, do the same on the other side. And then before I put flux in it, put it back in the fire. I'll check it on the anvil, I'll balance it up. It's very, very important that, uh, I call them the bulbs, the heels of the shoe, but the bulbs of the heels here are lined up. You don't want one further back like that and one up here, else when you weld it, you can't alter it. So before you put your flux on and weld it, make sure that that point and that point are perfect levels. You can't have one further back or one further back that way. Once it's welded, you're committed to that shape on your heels. I'm just going to scarf this up. I've left the fire running in the background. Normally I'll switch the fire off so the microphone doesn't pick up any of this noise, but I've left the fire on because I'm uh, going to be welding next seat. So like I said, you drag that side down there, just with a flat face of your, your hammer. You see how as you're forging it down, I forge that down, it pushes the shoe apart, so just give it a little gentle tap back together again. Same on the other side. And then, Everyone welds differently, but this is just the way I find works the best for me. Um, I forge that surface in there, I forge that surface in there, and it's bent both branches, both frog plates out, so I'll just pull them back together. And then I use the toe of my hammer, which is quite unconventional really. Most guys use the heel of the hammer to forge scarves in. But I just find using the toe of the hammer works better for me, but it's your call. If you want to use the toe of the heel of your hammer, no big deal. And you see they've moved apart of the tip there again. Just pull them back to where they want to be. So they're both nicely overlapping. Check my scarves. And like I said before, the most important part before you weld any heart bar shoe, any way you make it, whether you make it the way I make it or any other way, is to make sure that point there and that point there are both at the same level. You know, so one's not further back or one's not further back like that. 
once they're welded, that's it, you're totally committed. Check it from both sides because shoes can be deceiving. So I'll flux it up uh, and then I'll uh, bring it out, I'll forge that surface in there first and then I'll forge that surface in there, or weld that surface, sorry, and then I'll weld that bit at the back. That's always the weakest part in a, in a heart bar shoe. I generally like to cover all surfaces with flux. I think it keeps a bit of the scale out and any contaminants out of there. And then back in the fire, right in the hottest part of the fire. So this shoe looks like it's about ready to come out of the fire to weld, so I've got everything I need ready. When you're welding, it's sure has to come out of the fire onto the anvil, weld it up as fast as you can. You don't want to be looking around for the tools. So the tools that I need to weld this are my tongs, my normal hammer, flat face, forge that scarf in, turn it over. I'll forge that scarf in there, turn it over, that scarf in there, and then I'll throw it to my cross plane, which I've got ready, and I'll put the, the point of the frog plate on the anvil there, and I'll use a cross plane to get into that bit there. It just fits in nicely. And then I've got, if I've got time, if the shoe's hot enough, I've got my hollow bit tongs there, and I'll pull that apart, and I'll pull it right round till that uh, frog plate's facing out the other way, and it'll go straight back in the fire. I'll leave the fire on as well, so it keeps hot, so it'll be a bit noisy. So I've made sure I've held it in the right place, flat face of my hammer, that's that one nicely forged in. Just the light, light over, overlapping blows there, and both surfaces forged in there, into the back of the V. A little bit of that angle, a bit of that angle, and a bit straight onto it. That's that forged in. Now I'll draw my frog plate. Frog plate out quite nicely there. It'll still be welding it. Still just about hot enough there. It'll still be welding it. And then you get your half round tongs onto it. The thing you have to be careful of is, I'll show you when this is bent round. Just prise it round. You have to knock it back down like that. The, and these NC whispers, these are the fires that I like to make shoes out of. Uh, it's only a small gap there. So if you have a big curve in that, sometimes you can't get your shoe back in because it's bent round too far. So you twist it out and make sure it's not too tall that way. Give it a good old clean up. Uh, I'll flux it all up and it'll come out of the fire. My first heat, I'll be forging that up to a point there. Forge it up, forge it up that way. Round here, I'll go on the heel of the anvil there so I can get more of my steel onto it and I'll flatten it down try and forge these scarves out as well at the same time. So flux up all the surfaces again. Then back into the fire. Just gently pull it out so I don't damage the fire. So I forge it in, flip it over, forge that side in. Onto the heel of the anvil. GoPro gets it again. Smashing the fuck out of the GoPro twice. With these heart bar shoes, I always find if you can forge up the frog plate as much as you can, I always just find rasping frog plates on heart bar shoes is quite time consuming. And quite a physical job, so the better you can get it off the hammer, in my opinion, the easier it is to make them. So that's quite a nice frog plate, it's got a little crack there, so we'll just have another cheeky little heat on that. But I'll, I'll flux it up, I'll forge it that way, then I'll forge it down there just to forge that little scarf out there. And then I'll get the half round tongs that I've got ready, I'll put them on there and I'll bend it back flat, uh, level it all out and then we'll start marking the fullering. So I'll flux that up. It's welded together, but just for aesthetics, it's nice if you don't have any cracks or any scarves visible. So you get your tools sorted out, get everything out. When you're welding, you've got to have everything ready. So I've got my half round, forge it up with the hammer, half round tongs to bend that frog plate back. Brushes there, chalks there. The next thing I'll need is a ruler and then the fuller. Get everything ready for it. Get your, fl your flux out of the way because you've welded, you don't need that anymore. Get everything ready, it just speeds you up. There. So I'll just forge the that little scarf I had in the frog plate, just in the very tip of the frog plate. Forge that in. That's 
got rid of that nice little scarf. Hollow bit tongs on there. Oh, easier if you go that, that part. Bend it down. And it looks like a bit of a buckled mess at the moment. It's all over the place, keep it nice and clean. One of those shoes, halfway through you look at it and it looks like a, a buckled mess. I just made one at the weekend and uh, Billy turned up, Billy Crothers turned up when I had it turned inside out and just promptly walked away because it just looked like a bit of a mess. But if you'd have waited another minute or two, he would have seen that uh, it forged out quite nicely. Right, so we've got it welded. There's a little scarf there, but I can forge that when I level it. Uh, we're looking at the overall balance and shape of the shoe now. So it'll have to go. Normally, if I'd done a better job, which I haven't done this time, uh, I would have marked up my fullering, put stop ends in there so I know when my fullering's going to start. But as it happens, it's not a good enough shape yet. It's got to be balanced before you mark your fullering in. So at the moment, the faults in this shoe are, that's quite round in, if you, uh, where do you go there? Sometimes it's easier to break shoes in half like that. Uh, see, that's quite a round branch there. This one's round to there, but it's straight between that point and that point. So I've got to make them both symmetrical and they've both got to fit the foot or the shoe that I'm making it for. This is the shoe that I'm copying. There you see, that's quite a nice branch there. But that one doesn't quite fit. It's not quite the right shape at the moment. So I'll just get nice all over heat on that. Balance the shoe up, forge this little scarf out there. Uh, mark the fuller in and we'll fuller it. So I'll sort that shape out, pull that, that straight branch that was too straight, open that out, take a little bit of the curve out of that branch that was too round, and then have a quick look at the shape there. Yeah, not about, about right there. Forge the scarf out that I found. Because I left that steel a little bit thicker, you know when I uh, hockey stick my frog plates around, I left it thicker on there, thicker on there, and both frog plates there were thicker. That just gives me the tolerance that I can forge these little scarves out now. So I mark up the fullering, get these bulbs of heels. This is why I said it's so important to get uh, this point and this point at the same same part, you can't have one further back than the other. So you put your ruler across it there, and you can see that distance there is the same as that distance there. And then if you mark up your fullering stops at the toe, make sure your ruler's parallel with this leading edge of the anvil. Just hold it on with your finger, you've got to be pretty quick because it gets hot pretty quick. And that's where uh, the fullering will start there. This shoe's going to come out of the fire. I'm just going to mark, I just fuller one side at a time, fuller it, nail on it. So obviously I've got run outs on this, I'll put routes on my other one. What I normally tend to do is, instead of putting a stop end in like that when I'm doing a run out, I'll just ease off the fuller a little bit, I'll get the fuller full depth from there to there, and then I'll just do uh, probably three quarters of the fuller, the length of the fuller, and that'll be my run out, and then I know where my, my toenail's going to be. Before I fuller it, I've got to knock the fuller edge off. So, unfortunately, when you've got a frog plate, you can only work down the, the pointy end of the bick. So, don't work with your shoe just on the bick like that because the bearing surface on that inside edge is tiny and it'll put little dents all the way around. If you twist your shoe around, just, it increases that distance there, just increases it fractionally. So, the bick puts less stress on there, it doesn't dent the inside edge quite as much. So, I'll just pull an edge off there, all the way around, right up to the heel there. I'll make sure you see how that heel fits in perfectly onto that, that bick there. And just make it all real nice and round and smooth. And the furrowing edge is just, all I'm doing is forging that furrowing edge from 90 degrees, just folding it over slightly so that when you fuller it, it pushes it back out again. Keep it nice and clean from now on. Hammer finish shoe, you've got to work them clean, real clean. So start from the, where I put my fullering stop end in. Just light overlapping blows. Dropping the shoe down. So, because at the moment I've got a balanced shoe, whatever I do to one side, I have to do exactly the same to the other branch. 
Oh, just a little tip, when you're making bar shoes, heart bar shoes, quite often the frog plate ends up facing downwards. And then when you come to fuller it, the shoe will spin around on the frog plate. It just gets real awkward. So make sure your frog plate's sticking upwards. And then it's not on the anvil. It's not a raised point, it's not like a pivot point on your shoe. So that when you do fuller it, it just stays in the right place and your shoe's not spinning around, you're not trying to chase after it all the time. So I haven't put a definite stop end in yet, but that's where my toenail's going to be. Uh, and I'll just do a, a raise out of it there, about three quarters of the length of my fuller blade. Stamp it. So that was where my stop end would have been. Move it back a little bit. Toenail, heel nail, slightly more upright, and obviously middle nail. Not as much pictures of toenail, but more than the heel nail. Stamp them through, pitch them through. So with it being a hammer finish shoe, give it a good old brush up, get all the scale off, level it, and then you need to forge all these corners off. So you lean your shoe over on the, the anvil, that's 90 degrees, just lean it over a little bit and tap all these corners off. So at the moment it's taken all the edges off there at 45 degrees with the hammer. This the anvil's taken all those little corners off there and then it just wants a nice leveling. Then you've got quite a nice branch. So I've got to do exactly the same to that branch as I've done to that branch because that will have stretched it, not significantly, but it's probably stretched it by an eighth of an inch, knocking the fuller and edges off, fuller in it and knocking the corners off. So a fuller edge again, start from where you marked it, all the way around the shoe, and when you get up towards the frog plate you've obviously got to go a little bit closer towards the, the point of the bic there, give it a level, make sure that frog plate's lifted up rather than lifted sticking down, so the shoe doesn't pivot round on it. This steel's only uh, eight mil thick, it's five sixteenths. So I've got one of my, you see there, wide blade fullers. Which I'll be uh, making from very, very shortly. I'll be in the forging this next week making those. So my stop end would have been about there. So I drop my toenail back a touch, plenty of pitch, pretty much upright, and somewhere in the middle. And then round the bit again, whatever you do to one side you have to do to the other. And a good old level up. So that's quite balanced at the moment. The little things to look for in uh, shoes, heart bars in particular, is the distance between the uh, tip of your heart bar there and the inside edge. I'll do it in mil. So right from the centre that's 50 centimetres, five, 5 centimetres, 50 mil. And that one is 54. Uh, millimeters about five and a half centimeters so I'm just going to move my frog plate over a little bit to do this well, I'll get the whole shoe hot but I'll just put the, uh, the anvil onto that side and I'll just tap there that's one way of doing it 
The other way of doing it is to just get the shoe hot and put your tongs there and open it up and you can pull your tongs apart and that'll push that over nicely. Uh, in the same heat, I'm just going to put the brake over on the show. This shoe's got the brake over on there, so it just wants breaking over. And that'll be the shoe finished. And I'll run through the fullering, do the nail holes, job done. So this will be my last heat on this bar shoe now. So I'll give it a nice little clean up before I start. Move this frog plate over a tiny bit, just gently. I prefer hitting a bit of metal rather than putting the tongs in and moving it, but either way works. Before I just break over onto the toe. So this is why I didn't have to jump the toe up in the end. You only jump the toe up really because you need your seal to be a bit wider because when you fuller it, it blows your section out so your section gets wider. But if you know you're going to put a, a bit of break over on a toe like that, you don't need to worry about jumping your toe up. But if you're not jumping your toe up, you must remember to take that into account when you're working out your, your calculations for your material estimation. Because it's a heart bar, I'll just put a light little bit of seating out on there. One of the last jobs on most shoes. Go through the fullering. Restamp, re fritchley nail holes, just have a look at it. You want your fullering stops both to be at the same place. So I've got one there and one there. Uh, that one needs to come back about two, three, four millimeters. If your fullering doesn't finish, you start at the same place or finish in the same place. It just grabs your iron, even though the shoe might be totally balanced because your, your fullering is not balanced. It grabs your iron, makes you think it's a, a wrong shoe to a certain degree. So that looks all right to me. Gentle tap in the nail holes. So that's it, hammer finished heart bar shoe. Hopefully, should be the right, same size as that, same shape, same size. Lay them on top of each other, still a little bit warm. Perfect. There you go. That'll fit that foot all day long.